Okay, so we are back with Hilchas um, Yisodei Torah Perak Hamishi. We should finish today. Um, I did decide that I don't want to do the Mamar uh, uh, Kiddush Hashem because I looked at the length, and it is pretty long, and I feel like it would it would drag through the entirety of next week, and I'd, I'd really rather not do that. So um, I, we should finish the topic today unless something comes up that's unexpected. Okay, so just quick recap of what we did last time. So last time we were talking about the Din of Moser, which is within Kiddush Hashem in the sense that we don't give over someone for to be murdered or to have a, a, a rios uh, performed on them or with them. Uh, and uh, But it's not strictly speaking Allah and Kiddush Hashem. Uh, it has to do with like giving over. And then the only exception being that if they designate someone uh, who's already Chayv Misa, then we let them take that person, but we don't indicate to them L'chat Kila. Hey, uh, and what was that? Just one page of, I mean, yeah, one page. There you go. Okay. Um, then after we did that, we did Rafua. And the basic rule is you can, if it's a Malcolm Sakana, then you can heal with anything except for the big three. Um, and uh, if it's not a Malcolm Sakana, then you can't heal with, with, uh, with other Isurim, but that's only if the Isurim are Derech Asan. but if they're not Derech Asan, then Shalopa Makam Sakana, then you can heal with them. So like drinking disgusting pork medicine. Yeah. Uh, then we had the weird case of the Penuya, uh, the Afila Penuya, who the guy becomes terminally lovesick with and is going to die. And the doctor said the only way to heal is if you uh, have deal with her. And so we say that not, not only can he not have Bia, but he can't even speak to her from behind a getter, uh, and he should die. And they can't indicate to him that he should do this. And so we said that that sounds crazy, like since we're speaking to a Kanuya uh, Usher. So it turns out it's not Usher. This is a uh, Gezerah that if we allow things like this to happen, then they will, um, uh, people will become uh, Prutzim Barayos. And, uh, and therefore, we don't in Morin Kain Lobakov. We don't indicate to him that he does this. Um, so, presumably, if you were, if you found yourself in that position, again, this is not Psaf, but if you found yourself in that position, like this guy probably should find some way to, to at least marry her. Like, that's the, that's what the Gemara said. The Gemara doesn't even allow him to marry her. And that is another like red flag that this is not dealing with an intrinsic halacha. This is a Gazera. So, um, yeah. It's funny that it's not like a Gazera. Like, Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. It's it's very very strange formulation that it seems to be an iser on based in. Yeah, yeah, yeah strange. Uh, I mean, I, I guess there's a. Uh, I don't know if this has any other halachic expression, but like, I guess there is a certain responsibility that they have on, like Pritzus and Klal Yisrael. Like the only other thing I can think of is like um, uh, by Yom Tov. There's the halacha where. Basin sets up like policemen by like the gardens and orchards to make sure that the young men and women aren't mingling. Uh, and like, um, that's not, I mean, maybe it's us or to mingle. <laughs> it's, it's not like it, it, it's, in other words, like they're Shoftim and Shoftim, that institution is like setting up, you know, these things. I mean, it, it's structured differently because this is like in Moran Lovacock, which seems to be in their capacity as Dayanim, not as like, you know, uh, community leaders. But yeah, yeah, it's strange. Good point. Okay, so now we are on the last couple of halakos in this parak. Uh, halacha yud. Uh, so this is something that it was men- was mentioned in the Sefer Mitzvos. Kol haover midaito below ones al achas mikol hamitzvos hamoros batora. Anyone who transgresses um, from his mind. I don't know the implication of from his mind because that's not that's not synonymous with ratzon because ratzon and ones are uh, are uh, synonyms. So, like, in other words, I don't know why he's not using the word, like, mazid, like, bizadon, you know? Because yeah. I think that's usually, usually the distinction is zadon is you know it's usser, where shogig is you don't know or you forgot. And then ones is voluntary, is involuntary versus raton is voluntary. So, I mean, the thing that I think of is, I mean, I, I know this is, like, going too far, but, like, the only other, like, when have we seen the Ram say midaito? <laughs> I know that's a very like, specific question. Uh, that is das, but I'm saying acting midaito. Yeah. Anyone? So we saw it when he was talking about with free will. 
And we saw that when we were comparing it to the elements, that the elements don't act mida, like midas, they act uh, based on the minhag ha you know, whereas when then we went to Hilkos Tshuva, where he says, is, uh, is Adam is, uh, is note to whichever derech he wants, midato, you know? So I don't know if that's has anything to do with this, but that's 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 the only time I, I, I've seen. I mean, usually you don't see that in a halachic category. Anyway, kol over midato below ones al afas mikol mitzvos amors b'torah on any of the mitzvos that are stated in the Torah, bishat benefesh lahachis. Okay, you know I don't know. Do you do you know where the little green dictionary that I like is? I, uh, we should look up shat. It's a weird word, and if not, then um, the uh, alkale Hebrew English, which is the bigger dictionary. I'll look around here. Oh, okay. uh, maybe. No. Oh, this is Alkali. I've just never seen that one. Is that a Hebrew dictionary? It's in English. You want to get it? Yeah. Is that in there? Yeah. Oh, is it green? Is it baby green? It's baby green, yeah. This is Arab green. I'm talking about the Zilberman. I think I just got to bring all the ones that I have here. I have like 10. Oh. All right, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, well. Okay. Yeah, this is a good one. This is. I don't know what this is, but. Oh, you got one there also. Wow, is this in alphabetical order? Most dictionaries yes. are. No, no. no. Oh. <laughs> English alphabet? It's like. It's Hebrew to English, but it's translated to it. Oh, that's odd. That's great. I mean, I guess there are people, there's a market for that. <laughs> All right, so Sha'at in this, and I have no idea if this is even a difference between a modern uh, old word. Sha'at is contempt. There you go. Bisha'at nevesh means with disgust or with horror. Mm -hmm. I don't think it means horror here. So someone who contemptuously, who, who does an Avera consciously without coercion, Contemptuously to anger. Harzem Mahalo es Hashem. So he uh, desecrates the name. We'll analyze this after we read the whole thing. Lufikach Nemar Bishvuas Sheker. That's why it says by a, uh, a false oath. Vichilal Ta es Hashem Elokacha Ani Hashem. And you um, desecrate the, the name of your God, I'm Hashem. The Im Avar Ba'asaram Yisrael. And if he transgressed in, um, uh, in a, with a minion, so then he is desecrated the name in public. Okay, so so far is what we've seen in the Sefer Mitzvahs under Chul HaShem. But now he says, Therefore, uh, similarly, anyone who separates from an Avera, or does a Mitzvah, not because of anything in the world, not out of fear, or another kind of fear, or to seek honor. But because of the Creator, blessed is He. Like Yosef refraining or separating himself from the wife of his master. What? <laughs> yeah. So, like thinking, like, yeah. Uh, yes, you mean the Yosef thing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't bring an example for the first one. Right. Which would have been helpful uh, because I mean, what, what bothers you about this a lot, or what's like, what are the problems here? I mean, I, I, I feel like there are a couple. Anything, either the idea or the formulation. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, first of all, like, how, like, I guess it doesn't really matter, but like, how does anyone else you know? Yeah, that's what bothers me the most is like. Yeah. It seems like up until this point, Chilul Hashem and Kiddush Hashem are demonstrative in their nature, mm -hmm. you know? But here, like, especially a Shavua Sheker, like, you're only going to make a Shavua Sheker, presumably, or you're most commonly going to make it in a case where people don't know it's a Shavua Sheker, right? Yeah. Like, they think that you're giving a real Shavua. So, so how, in what sense does this desecrate the name of God and, and, and if you said, like, if you said, you know, that it's not a demonstrative thing, so then why are we distinguishing between in public and in private? Yeah. Well, it could be there's an added element to it being demonstrative, like that makes it worse somehow. But it's not. You mean, when you say added, you mean that, that 
something else needs to be in the circumstances that like it like it somehow this is manifest or you're saying like it's not manifest at all but somehow the fact that you're in public oh. Oh, is oh, a different oh, avera oh oh i hear you now yeah yeah because yeah, yeah, i mean you, you, look you could take that pro i mean see this is a weird thing though is like like I mean, the, your initial question I think is 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 based on the intuitive reading, which is like if I, like you know, uh, I don't know, like if I, uh, I was gonna say eat a cheeseburger, but that that would be um, that would seem to have a hana in it, you know. So I, I don't know if that's if that would negate the uh, the contemptuous nature of it. Um, I don't know. Yeah, but in other words, how is anyone to know whether you're doing this lahachis? Like that's. Yeah. Right. I mean, and there's no like hasra where you have to like declare that you're doing lahafis. Yeah. Right. Oh, also, I'm just a little confused. Why, why is he bringing in um, uh, shvua shaker? Like, so because the pasuk says that when you do a shvua shaker, then you you desecrate the name of God. But he's saying that's all of them. Aren't, isn't he saying that's all of them too? Like yeah, yeah, he's saying it's, it's random. I guess this is either he's bringing this in to show a source that there is such a thing as doing an avera that produces a chul hashem. Like, because up until now, it's not really, I mean, it, all we've seen is a case of yehari vel yavor, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you uh, if you do uh, the avera there, then it's chul hashem, but we don't see it attached to like another mitzvah. Mm -hmm. Like, if you violate mitzvah A, then you get this thing. And, and that's the other thing also is like, is he saying, I mean, he's not saying that Shavuot Sheker is always in this category, I don't think. No. I mean, but the Pusuk sounds like it's saying that, right? Yeah, but he doesn't say Lefikach Nemar. Lefikach Nemar, but Shavuot Sheker, yeah, and that's true. It seems, well, yeah, it seems like he's learning out all the mitzvot from Shavuot Sheker. Yeah. Let's look at this footnote here, the long uh, first long line. Lefikach Nemar, but Shavuot Sheker, v'chilol ta, eshem elkech ani eshem. Shavuot Sheker, hi achas min haveros hachamuros biyoser, so it's one of the strictest averos. Lefikach, Adam but Wow, never seen that one. Um, I did see it in Hilos Chuba, this Hilos Chuba that he quotes. That's where he says that Shavu Sheker, you don't get, um, uh, uh, sorry, that, that he puts that in the category of Hamuros, even though you, you, you're not Chayv Misa or Akaris for it. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then, the other, likewise, I mean, look, you can conceive of a person, maybe, okay, I mean, this is, again, I'm not making a good argument, but you can, maybe you can tell that the person is doing it in a mezalzel type way, like in a, in a degrading, uh, you know, uh, lahakis way, but you don't tell me you can tell that for a mitzvah, mm. you know, mm. like, how can I tell it, like, and this is, this is any mitzvah, you know, like, like any mitzvah theoretically could fall into this category. Like, how can you tell the guy's putting on tefillin, you know, you can have bore. Right. And the other thing also is like, you know, I'm inclined to say that, that he, what he means is you're doing a mitzvah lishma, because that's is very similar to his, his um, lo mi pnei pne davar ba'olam, but he, he calls it here mi pnei ha bore baruchu, which is not what he says in Hilgos Tshuva. Yeah, right, and that's not, like, not Yeah, yeah, um, the, uh, yeah, yeah, um, you know, uh, in Taklis, well, uh, I'm thinking of Chelet, um, I got it here. <laughs> Uh, I, I know what you're thinking though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me just double check and see if he, that he doesn't say bore there. Um, Sorry, it's not like in uh, in uh, in Hilosa Chuva. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, uh, Ovid me Ava. So that's the one similar phrase. So Yiras Hara is, I mean, it doesn't say Ra here, but does the truth because it's true and uh, the good will come in and of itself. Yeah. And then similarly, when he says, Kol HaOsik Batora Kadei Likabo Sachar Okdei is anyone who is involved in Torah to receive reward or to not attain uh, punishment. So they're involved uh, not for its own sake. Someone who does it not out of fear and not to receive reward. Similar to Bori, but not really. Uh, he does it because of the love of the Lord of all the earth who commanded it. Then he's doing it. He's involved in Lishma. 
and then now I'm not saying that that I'm not saying that that in Kiddushin Torah it it's not lishma. Right? Like it does sound like it's telling about doing a mitzvah lishma. It's just you know there are differences, and I, I I wonder why. And the other thing also is like I don't think I mean this is a ca- a different category of minia me'avera lishma. Like we're not familiar with mitzvahs lishma, you know, but like yeah. Yosef, you know, right. separating himself from Isha's uh, Rabo. And the other, the other weird thing is there's no category barab in here. Hmm. Right. There's also no ma'isa of holding yourself back from. Yeah, that's true. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Like let's say you just like one day are just rejecting pork <laughs> internally. Right. You know. Yeah. yeah. And like the reason why I would have been inclined to say that that doesn't count is because you're not doing a, a discernible action, but then neither, I mean, yeah, right. Um, let's look at this last footnote here on Hari uh, Zemekadesh Hashem. The Ryan, oh, good, he quotes the thing in Makos. You know what? Let's look at the thing in Makos. Um, uh, yeah, Pierce Mishnayos Nazikin, and I'm going to get the. Um, uh, yeah, you can get that one and I'll use the Alator one and see if there's any significant differences. Sure. Uh, it's the last one in Makos. You, know you know what I'm talking about? No. Okay. See, when there, not, not, that, not that review is bad, but whenever whenever you haven't seen a particular Ramam that's like a, a, a classic Ramam, I feel more justified going through it. Um, okay, so the Mishnah is a fairly well-known one. Uh, it's, yeah, it's the last mission in Makos. Yeah. Yeah, so this is uh, the one that people say when they're done learning Mishnayos. Rabbi Hanania, oops. Rabbi Hanania ben Akashi Omer, Ratzah Kadosh Baruch Hu Lezakos, Es Yisrael, Lathikach Kirba Lehem Torah Umitzvos, Shnemar, Rashem Chavitz Mati, Ko Yagil Torah Viyadir. So Rabbi Hanania ben Akashi says, God desired to make Israel meritorious. Therefore, he increased for them, or he made a uh, Quantitatively abundant, like hereba, uh, Torah and mitzvos, as it is stated, Hashem desired in order um, to make it righteous, meaning I think His people, Yagdil Torah Yadir, and to aggrandize and glorify His Torah. Yeah, it's worth looking at every once in a while, though. Um, so He says, "I'm going to read mine." And you tell me if there's significant differences, not just like synonyms. Rabbi Chanani ben Akashi Omer Rata Kadosh Baruch Hu Zakos Yisrael Kol Meikari Ha'Emuna Batora. Yeah, so. Yisodos, yeah. One of the foundations of uh, of uh, conviction in the Torah, ki kishi yakayim adam mitzvah mitariyah of mitzvahs karo'ui ukahogen, that when a person fulfills one of the mitzvahs properly, and I don't know the difference between ro'ui and kahogen, they both mean properly, v'lui shatif ima kavana mi kavanas olam, and he doesn't attach to it any one of the intentions of the world, any worldly intent. Matara. Matara, yeah. Matara, uh, which one do I like better? I like Matara. I don't know why. Uh, Kavana. Yeah. Yeah. Just Kavana Olam just sounds weird. Worldly goal or objective sounds good. The Shumpanim in any in any uh, at all. Elashiyas Ola Osa Lishma Meava, but he does it for its own sake and out of love. So he uses both terms there. As I've explained to you, that's as I explained to you in Sen Chelik. I don't think so. I mean, Meava is is a description of an Oved as well. And lishma is only a description of an act. Uh-huh. Like you don't say like you a person is a person lishma, but you say he is right. oving the other. Right. No. Like yeah. 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 Lishmanic. Yeah. Um, right. So so uh, that's a fact. He doesn't mention Hevel's Yisrael Torah. He is zocha to Olam Haba. And by the way, he doesn't bring this down in, in the Mishnah Torah either. Right. This instant Olam Haba thing. If you do a mitzvah um, lishma once. Yeah. This is, this is always a weird thing. This is why Rabbi Hanania says, since the mitzvahs are many, Okay, fine. So it's impossible. There's so many mitzvahs. It's impossible a person will not do uh, one of them at least. Uh, according to its uh, requirements and its perfection. And once he does that mitzvah, his soul will live through, meaning eternally through that action. And what, is in, what indicates this ikr, 
Tony calls it Ikar. You says you so yeah, yeah, there yeah. also? Yeah. yeah. Either way, it's funny. Masha Shal Rabbi Hanania ben Tradion, Ma'ani Lachaye Aholam Habas. This is what Rabbi Hanania ben Tradion asks. What do I have in my life for Olam Haba? The Yeshivo, Hameji, even answer, answered him, Klumba, Maisa Leadacha, didn't you get a Maisa in your hand? Klumar, what does this mean? Nis Damin Lacha Lasos Mitzvah Kahogan? Did you happen upon a mitzvah to do it properly? Yeshivo, he answered him, Ki Nis Damna Lo Mitzvah Sadaka Al Derech Shlemus Kahoma Shafshar. Um, uh, that he, uh, he answered that he fulfilled the mitzvah of Sadaka in the most perfected way possible. And he merited Olam Haba. So what does it mean that he, uh, Hashem acted or desired his righteousness? To make Israel righteous. Such that Torah would be aggrandized and glorified. Yeah, I mean, this is not directly related uh, other than the fact that it's not doing a, a, a Misa like Lishma once. I mean, this is its own heavily problematic thing in the Ram. Like, what's the mechanism? You know, like, I thought Ram's whole thing is about the Ikarian. Like, don't you already have Olam Haba when you have the Ikarian? He just said that a couple of programs ago. Like, what's with this lotion of his Damnus and, like, Ba Maisa Liadacha? Like, it's, it makes it sound like you can't do this intentionally. It's just like you're going to chance find it. What's the guarantee that, like, that since there are so many mitzvahs, you're going to do it Lishma? Like, no. Like, Lishma is a level of development, you know? Like, what are the chances that you're, what are your chances you're going to do this for any mitzvah? And, like, uh, and like, yeah, again, you know, the, the, when I say where's the mechanism, I mean, the Ramam's mechanism for Olam Haba is the soul attaining knowledge. So how can, you know, doing an action, you know, shaking your lulav, like how can that give you Olam Haba, Lishma? Right. I don't yeah. know what you mean, that, like, you mean like, you just enjoy shaking the lulav? Right, yeah, yeah, what's, where's the Lishma you mean? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it sounds like if you enjoy shaking the lulav that physically, then that would not count because that's, that would be a Matara of the Olam, right. you know, um, so I assume it have to be like some sort of uh, ideational shaking, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I have a yeah. thought. Yeah. Um, I, maybe like so I was thinking about doing a mitzvah Bishle Musa. Yeah. Like, like let's say like um, like the mitzvahs are designed to point a person in the direction of like. Um, like the true idea of the thing um and relating properly to it i know that they know those big but let's say like um um trying to think of, trying to think of a good other move on is that what you're trying to think <laughs> yeah no i i don't remember what like the like the ideas of lula of our uh, off yeah. like um uh, what say about like, they say what about matzah okay yeah so like let's say um um it's designed, let's say it's designed to like, oh, uh, here, I'm going to use sukkah. Okay. Um, that was yeah. my next suggestion, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In the public, yeah. Yeah. So let's say like, it's, um, it's uh, like part of like, you know, like the idea of, let's say the idea of sukkah is um, to recognize your dependence on Hashem for like, like shelter. Yeah. So I think um, because the, the structure of sukkah reflects that idea yeah um whenever a person does so good there, there's a chance that they might just like you know people are naturally at least somewhat reflective mm -hmm. um and so sometimes you'll be doing something by rote but um people but um people might you know a person might um stop and think about what it is that they're actually doing and have like a real recognition of the idea of, of like what re the reality that this is reflecting is mm -hmm. um and there's because there are so many mitzvahs there's so many opportunities for a person to like have that moment of real of like realization and like reflection and like thinking about it yeah uh, that um there's just like so many opportunities that people are like almost certainly going to like have that i hear yeah, did I think I, it's probably something further than that because yeah, yeah, no, but that's that's a good approach. And what it reminds me of, did I ever tell you the one, the only idea I know from Rav Chaim of Volozhin, mm -hmm. the Lishma, his his mitoshal Lishma Ba Lishma. I can't remember if we talked about this. I'll say it again anyway. Is the uh, we think of mitoshal Lishma? Yeah, I definitely feel like we talked about this. Mm -hmm. We think about mitoshal Lishma Ba Lishma means that if you keep on doing mitoshal Lishma, you'll eventually get to the developmental level of Lishma. Right. But I believe, and I, don't, I read this so long ago, I don't even know if this is accurate anymore, that uh, I think he said that mitok means in the midst of. Yeah. 
that when you're learning, then like, let's say you're learning for COVID or let's say you're learning for grades or whatever. And like, so in the midst of your learning, then you will have moments where you are not thinking about the, the, the COVID or the grades. You're just attached to the ideas and thinking about them per se, you know? So it almost sounds like Isaac, what you're saying like is, you know, in the same way, like, just like that kind of comes about by chance. Like you can't plan for that. In fact, if you plan for it, you wouldn't get it. But with mitzvahs, presuming that you have a basic awareness of what the mitzvah is, what the Indian of the mitzvah is, then you will chance upon a pure relationship to this mitzvah that even if your normal motive for mitzvahs is like for reward or fear of punishment, you'll, you'll, your mind will engage in the mitzvah during a tasia in a way that's not connected to that motive. Yeah. Yeah. So what, I mean, that's not necessarily only limited to mitzvahs. You can get that in other areas. Uh, yes. Meaning like non-mitzvah activities. Yeah. 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 Right. But that's just not going to get you Olam Haba because, uh, and then this brings us into the question of how does this get you Olam Haba? I mean, on a basic, you want to try answering that, Isaac? I mean, I have it on a basic level, but it's your, it's your, you know, you have an idea? <laughs> I mean, like you got to say something about the fact that, that the, your, that your, your, your soul, for the lack of a better term, because that's the thing that goes in Olam Haba, like, engages in the the ideas of the mitzvah in a different way when you're acting when it's when it's uh involved in your action you know i don't know if it means that it makes it real to you or it's a manifestation of it being real to you but somehow it, somehow, it somehow it must have a difference in your in your soul because the soul is the only thing that goes into olam haba your body doesn't go into olam haba your psyche doesn't go into olam haba so there must be like a level where it registers on your soul um and that's what it means you're going to get olam haba now just a side point here i've heard of pesach interpret this a couple of times and it's been a while since I've heard uh, since I've listened to it but I remember when we first approached this he said that this seems to be a different type of olam haba than like the yudgamo ikarim you know kol yisrael yesh lahem chaylok olam haba um that I think I believe he described this as like a reward of olam haba I, I don't know what that means but in, in other words like yeah, kol yisrael yesh lahem chaylok olam haba just by virtue of, of having the yugam karim, this is not gonna, like that's the ticket in, so to speak, because your soul is attached to these ideas. This is something else. So whatever this is, it's something else. Like that's a step that like, I think is pretty clear from the fact that again, just what like two prakim ago, or was I, I mean, one masechta ago before this, the wrong one went into uh, in Perak in, 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 I could talk about the Ikarim, I get a little there. So this has to be something else, but still weird that he says it and it's, it's weird also that um the, the mishnah doesn't say anything about olam haba mm -hmm. just says god wanted to make israel righteous and glorify torah so i wouldn't have said olam haba here so like the, the, the question is like where's uh the wrong get it from i mean yeah there's this uh this anecdote with the hanani of intradion but like you know is that uh i mean it's a midrash like you can say that something different you know but the wrong is like carving out a new category of olam haba right. here and what we see from so again the footnote directed us here it's not as relevant as the footnote made it seem but you see one thing from here not only do you get in olam haba they throw in a kiddush hashem kiyom bonus mm -hmm. you know like if you do this you get a kiyom and kiddush hashem so yeah you know right. and guess what you did that one lishma too <laughs> you get double olam haba yeah yeah it's just it, it's a it's a strange right. it's, it's the amount of it goes by the godel, the magnitude. Uh -huh. That's uh, that's a, a statement of Hilkos Tshuva. Look at godel, chachmaso, or or is it rov? Uh, I always read it as godel or rov. I think rov chachmaso, the rov masa Let me just make sure I'm, I'm quoting that right. Um, I think it's in the ninth parak, which is not about Olam Haba. Yeah, he says, uh, sorry, ninth paragraph, um, fourth paragraph. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Nosein Lano Torah Zo, eight time, we read this earlier in the year, also, B'chol HaOzeb Kol HaKazabav Yodo De Gemur Nachona, Zoche Balafai Lama Ba. And anyone who knows the Torah with a complete and sound knowledge, he merits through it life in the world to come. Ulufi Godel Ma'asav, the Godel Chachmasa Hu Zoche. According to the magnitude, is the way I like to translate it, of his actions, and the magnitude of his Chachma, he is Zoche. So whatever that means. <laughs> but it's definitely not the quantity is the point. Yeah. What we're we gonna ask the. No, I was gonna say like it's how much the like this action affects your. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to say it. 
Yep. Okay, so why can't we do the Barabim? I don't know. Yeah, so strange. Okay, onward. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, last couple of halachos here. Uh, this is the last category of Kiddush Hashem. This is what the Rambam called for Hil Hashem in the Sefer Mitzvot, the one that is on Yechidim. So Yish Devarim Acherim Shem Bichlal Hil Hashem. There are other things that are included in the desecration of the name. Vihu Sheyase Adam Gadol Batora Umafursam Bachasidus Devarim Shabrios Merane Acharav Bishvilan. So this is a, a, when a person who is great in Torah and, and well-known for piety does things that make the make people meraninin after him on their account. Meraninin is a weird word because like ranan in Torah means either to sing in joy or to sing in sadness, but here it means like to complain, I think. Um, well, let's see. Uh, the footnote says meraninin acharat medabrin begnuso, to speak disparagingly. Yeah, okay. Um Okay, even though they're not transgressions. So uh, nevertheless, he uh, desecrates the name. Kigon, for example, uh, he buys something and doesn't pay the money for the purchase immediately. And that's if he has it. Meaning, it's not like he always has to pay. This is a weird distinction. It's not like he always has to pay it immediately. But if he has the money and he doesn't pay it for some reason, then that's in this category. And consequently, the um, the... Well, I guess this part explains it. The sellers are like uh, trying to come after him to get the money, but who keep on and he avoids them. Yeah, so that's definitely um, uh, that's definitely that looks bad. Or he is um, prostituting it. He, uh, he does a lot of jesting and uh, uh, or eating and drinking with the Amiharats and among them. Okay, so odd one. I'm trying to cut out for a moment. Oh yeah. Um, the, he, I said he, um, he does a lot of jesting or eating and drinking near the Amiharat and among them, near the ignoramuses. So I guess that has to be looked down on. I mean, it's not just in, like, nowadays, at least in many circles, I don't think this is looked down upon. I think it's, like, looked down upon if you don't do this. Like, if you had a, a Rav who, like, refused to eat with, like, like I say, like a Shul Rav who refused to eat with his Shul members, that would be, like, that would be this category. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, there's oh, a whole, like cultural divide between the Amiharas and like yeah, yeah. Um, oh, bura banah This one still applies. You don't speak nicely with people. The ino makalam saver panimiyafas. You don't greet them uh, favorably. No, it, it, it doesn't apply anymore. Ella balk tata vakaas. Um, uh, he is a, uh, a contentious and angry person. Oh, you see from here, Ram doesn't hold its usher to be angry. <laughs> um, uh, and other things like that. What? Yeah. <laughs> I'm still saying it as if it's a joke, though. <laughs> um, because uh, really, you can make an argument that the Ramam does hold its usher to be angry because he puts in Hilkos Deos under the Halakta Bidraka, which he holds it to Mitzvah. So, what is this then? Um, I mean, you can, you can still answer according to me by saying um, that it's not the being of angry, it's the acting angry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, you I, could say, I, I guess it's the, the, like a, there's like a philosophical imperfection in being angry, but the Masa Mitzvah, is, the Masa Isser is being, is, is, yeah, act, is acting angry, right? Yeah, because all the Deos in Hilkos Deos are actions. Right. You know, he never really talks in Hilkos Deos about just internal you know, if you are a very angry guy, but you never manifest it, then he doesn't talk about that in Hilkos Deos and the Halakha Bidrafa. Hold on a second. It's the Halakha Bidrafa, not the Chashavta Bidrafa. Oh, yeah, anyway, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, it's weird because now it seems like you can do Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 hold on a second. You're not talking about this category are you well i'm saying yeah if you think cost is just here is just being a ball like just being not the action of cost. no because i think these are all examples of things that people are complaining about though or degrading you about so i, I would think that this cause has to be manifest and like disapproved by people right but not it's not like every action of cost is right would be a uh, oh, I see what you're saying. Meaning that this this violation. Well, let's finish the sentence. See how he says it. Vakiyot b'dvarim elu hakolfi godol godlo shal chacham tzarech shi'adaktik 
uh, al atmo viase lihni mishers din. So all in accordance, so this is proportional, all in accordance with the, the magnitude of the chacham, he needs to be particular with himself and to act uh, beyond the letter of the law. So earlier he had said, Yish devar nechayim shehim bichlal fil Hashem v'hu shiyase adam gadol v'tora mufursim b'chazus devarim shabrios. Yeah, I mean, you're right. It doesn't sound like doesn't sound like he is Hari Zen Mikhal Hashem. This guy is Mikhal Hashem. In other words, yeah, like you said, it's not the each action of not smiling at a person is the Maisa uh, Isra of Khil Hashem. It's like being this type of person that people are Murani Nacharav, you know? Right. Yeah. It is an interesting category though. Um and oh, we'll do one more. V'chein im diktek hachacham al atzmo. So too, if the chacham uh, is particular with himself, v'haya diburo benachas ima brios, and his speech is pleasant with people. V'datam mu revas ima. And I always thought that, that was a. Oh no, no, I I always used to be perplexed by that. His mind mixes with them, but then I realized that I think this is a yet another instance where das means his his like psyche, not his in intellect. It's not his intellect mixes with them. It's like he. He uh, he gets his personality, you know, melds well with people. Like he gets along with them, you know. And he he greets them cheerfully. He is insulted by them, and he doesn't insult. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think it means that he attracts their insults. I think it means if he gets insulted, he doesn't insult back. He honors them, even those who make light of him. But knows him knows him by and he does business faithfully. Uh, which must mean more than just not cheating in business. Uh, means like I guess he he, he has a, establishes a trustworthy reputation, uh, man of his word. And he doesn't see this is anything. Lo yarbe. Oh no, sorry, no. I was gonna say prolong, but it means he doesn't have a lot of uh, meals with Ami Haaretz and, and, and sessions with them. Yeah, I, I, I guess I I, I uh, glossed over that before because he also said yarbe the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Meaning it's not that it's not that even a guy like this, it's not that he never eats with Amihar. It's that that would be like excessive. Um, the low year yeah, yeah. yeah. About Nusif and Nusin, Nusif and Nusin I actually had an experience with someone that I would say like actually did this. Yeah. Um, I, it was when I, um, I was like buying like software supplies. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess it was like it was like kind of clear that like I, I wasn't like you know an experience but like it wasn't like I had like tons of experience like I was like I wanted to like buy like I was like buying like basic supplies you were holding um, a coloring book and asking yeah. for software <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and he was like the, the guy was like talking me out of buying things that like th that I didn't need yeah that's a good that, example like, like I, 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 like I wanted to like buy like some, like I wanted to buy like cloth, like for, like writing, like like cloth, like I could, they could like really use to like get started. And he was like, he and he was telling me like I should like get like get like just like get like the basic like basic things and like some like 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 tr like training things and then I, I he like come back and get but like yeah. That's a good yeah. example, right? Meaning he's under no obligation to prevent you from buying his merchandise. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah he, I was trying, really to, I was trying to like spend more, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." That's a good example. Velo, uh, uh, we read that. Velo yirae tamid el osik batora atuk betzizis muktar betfilin, and he's only ever seen involved in Torah, wrapped in tzitzis, and crowned with tefillin, uh, and smiling apparently. Ve'ose b'chol masav l'vimishros din, and he does in all of his actions. Um, uh, beyond the letter of the law. Uh, ah, so he does say that explicitly. This is provided that he doesn't distance himself excessively or be uh, like, um, this is better word than abstinent. Uh, that doesn't have the right connotation in English, but meaning like he doesn't uh, make himself desolate. He doesn't like, like he's not like not monastic. Like he doesn't, he's not like a monk, you know. Um, to the point where everyone is Macaulay's him, praises him, the Ovino so, and uh, and loves him umis avin lamasav and they desire his actions. I don't know if desire his actions means that they want to emulate his actions or if they like want him to like engage with them in action. Like it's weird umis avin lamasav. They have a taiva for his actions. You know, yeah. Um, Harize kiddush has a shame. So this guy has sanctified the name. I think your point from before is also um, 
uh, evident here that you, you can't say that every one of his actions of Lifni Mishur Sadin is a human Kiddush Hashem. It's that the, the, the totality of these things leads people to perceive him in a certain way, and that perception is like Kiddush Hashem. Yeah. It's a very not, not technically structured mitzvah here, you know, yeah. It's, yeah. Um, or for the, this element of the mitzvah. Ha'izeh Kiddush Hashem, of Omer, Vayomer li avdi ata. So I said, uh, sorry, he said to me, I, I assume this is Hashem saying to him, avdi ata, you are my servant. Yisrael asher b'cha es pa'er. Israel, uh, in whom uh, I will glor- take, be glorified. Yeah, so that, I mean, and that's, that's the, the critical idea here is that these things are a kiddush Hashem in the sense that they reflect well on God. Um, and, uh, and, I guess the question is how. Like, let's see if we can get like articulate that because now that we've seen the entire picture, um, we have Yiharag Val Yavor, where you're really demonstrating um, like specific ideas, like that a Vodazara is Kanega Kolatara Kula, or that you know Avas Hashem is more important than your own life, or Im Abdi Nefesh Mifnei Nefesh. Like, I, you know, we don't play God in terms of, like, choosing people's lives. So those are demonstrations of specific ideas. The question is, how does this glorify God? Meaning the fact that this guy is doing this, all of these manifold things and not doing a bunch of other stuff, how does that bring glory to God exactly? I mean, I know this is just, this is just a matter, I don't think this is a hard question. It's just, like, articulating the common intuition here. Yeah, and I guess people, um, like, associate certain ideas with people. Right. So meaning that it's, it really does come from the fact that you are a, your, your actions are presumed to reflect the value system or the Ratzon Hashem. Meaning, let's say, for instance, like, let's, okay, I, I'll, I'll give a problematic example in a second. Like, if hypothetically it were possible for a person to act in a way where people would isolate that action and identify it as something that is not stemming from God, you know, from God, Ratzon Hashem, then you wouldn't have a Chil Hashem if they did a bad action. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, let's say, let's say they, um, let's say they have Tourette's, okay, right? And like, they shout out a swear word, you know? Um, but people know that it's involuntary. Like, you wouldn't say, oh, that's a Chil Hashem, mm-hmm. because it's clear to the person that that, like, verbal tick is not an expression of the values of Ratzon Hashem. Uh, yeah, I'm saying a little bit more, but... Okay, yeah, what are you, what's, what's the difference? I'm, I'm saying, well, it might be, actually, it might be the same. I'm not sure exactly, but, like, the... Yeah, maybe, maybe, but it, not not that, like, people see all their actions as Rosh Hashem, but that they see the person, and, like, their, like, the emotional, re- like, reaction they have to the person becomes the same exact emotional reaction they have to... Uh-huh, so to that fits... Yeah, not because... They are doing representation. So. Yeah, okay. So that, that, okay, I actually haven't read this inside in a while, but that kind of, uh, it fits with my memory of the Rambam's explanation of Moshe Rabbeinu's uh-huh. that that Moshe Rabbeinu, God was not angry. No, maybe that fits in my way. <laughs> no, I think, because uh, I, I guess we'd have to look at it, but like. Uh, yeah, it reminds me, I, I heard a few once about like outcome and like why you had people on stage, I guess. Oh, yeah. Like because people, identified him with God, so like if he's wealthy, then he's someone that they look up to, and then mm-hmm. they think of God as like a good good idea. So, yeah. Like, like he's a covered guy. So yeah. God is like right. Guy. Yeah. So I'm just trying. To, I, I hear the difference now, but I just want to try to articulate it. Feel free to jump in if you want to do so. Also. Um, yeah. Because like the way that you're, I mean, to use a, a bad analogy, the way that you're describing it is almost like when, um, like, 
if uh, uh, like let's say like like you got like a 20 something year old and he sees like the older 20 something year olds like being like you know on Wall Street making all this money being like hedge fund guys and like they're riding these fancy cars and stuff and uh, and like like eating all this fancy food and like you know and and having sunglasses and laughing boisterously you know so there people assume assume that oh being a Wall Street guy like is successful like like gives you the success and they want to associate with the Wall Street lifestyle because they're attracted to that like image of of success like th that example is like different than what I was saying yeah. where they yeah so meaning like they see that this is a guy who is nice and honest and like and uh and and they, and they want to emulate him and they associate that with the der Hashem you know or the Avodah Hashem lifestyle and and that makes them want to you know be closer to Hashem and uh and his will not a one-for-one -one like expression yeah 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 so what yeah, how does it yeah I think because when a person does this, people say that person is like a good person. Yeah. And like he's like, and like this person is like, like, you know, people, you know, want, let's say like fame and fortune or whatever, but like people also want to feel like they're, like they're, you know, like a person wants to feel like they're a good person. Right. Some people uh, think that that's the only thing you need to do, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, to what to want to be a good person? No, to, to be a good person. I mean, that that's the classic. Isn't it enough to just be a good person? Like that's that is people's definition of morality. You probably get that a lot. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the thing is, it's um, like being a good person is very like nebulous. He, he's doing finger quotes uh, right. just to let you know. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so like, it's kind of nebulous. But like when you have a person who's um, serving as like an embodiment of like of like of the quality of being like a good person, yeah. Um, then people want say, oh, that person's a good person. I want to be since I want to be a good person. I'll, like, I want to be like that person. And the fact that the person is um, doing it as like a like as a representative of, of Torah um, reflects positively on, on like the Derech Torah. Yeah. So this is, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the point you're making about the, uh, the ne nebulosity or nebulousness of the thing, uh, uh, of the idea of a good person is like, yeah, I think seeing it embodied in a person where all their particulars are likely to be sure Sadin has an impact that you know that this is a, uh, this doesn't happen naturally. Like, like I think, because one of the problems with this be a good person thing, most people when they say be a good person is they really just mean be a nice person, <laughs> you know, like, like, but they, in, I think they, people realize there is such a thing as a, a good person that niceness is a, accompanies, but like, if you don't see it, then you don't know what it, like then, in other words, you can chase the ideal of, I want to be a good person, but you would be struck if you met someone who's actually like that. You know, who's actually a really good person like like what the example that comes to my mind is um people have been talking the last couple of weeks about uh rabbi uh abraham torsky you know who was big in the non-jewish world of like psychology and addiction and i'm sure tons of the people who he worked with like they knew he was jewish but they don't know anything about halakha and like they're they they the way they describe it is like oh he was always nice to me he was always you know like they sense that there's some underlying like difference here that's not just that's different than this person has a nice disposition you know not just a kind of another kind old man by the way when you said nebulous i was like well you know that's so bad <laughs> yeah you know moshe was a nebulous good person when he went up into the clouds in harsin high <laughs> um yeah so the question again I, I don't know if this is a sociological question or uh or a question about the mitzvah the question that I started off with when we did the section is like, you have these three categories of Kiddush Hashem and Kiddush You have the martyrdom halakos, which are the primary ones. You have the mitzvah lishma and like avera lahafis. And you have this, um, the way that people view you, lifni mishur sedin type thing. So what's weird about it is in the, in the common mind, in the common person's mind, this last category is the main thing. People are not aware of the second category. And the martyrdom thing, people also um, 
are aware of, like they know that someone who dies, the, the, the concept of dying al Kiddush Hashem is like talked about, you know, but like it's not, it's clear from the Rama that that's the primary category, you know? And so like, I, I guess this is, I'm just gonna throw this question out there. Like, like how does this ordering of the, the, the types of Kiddush Hashem, Kiddush Hashem like, chain like it is different than the po popular notion but but like what do we make of that difference i guess you know sorry what was the second category second category is the mitzvah uh, uh, uh mitzvah lishma and people just aren't aware of that oh, okay yeah right. and i'm still not clear on that i mean it's yeah. still yeah like how is that i mean maybe, maybe we got to do that first yeah how is that in any sense kiddush and the especially if you can't see it well, you can see how the doing it, like doing the Isser office could be with the little gem. Like people, you definitely you could have a situation where people know about that. Yeah, but are, are we going with the idea that, that, that this applies even if people don't know about it? Because I think the Shavuot Shaker really indicates that, you know, you're, you're, you're really not going to make a Shavuot Shaker when people know that you're just lying, you know? I'd say you're Michal the shame in your own mind, at least. Yeah. You're... you're like you might not be doing it uh, in a way that's like publicly visible, but when you make a shvua sheker that um, is like apparent to the public, then and that's not apparent. No, that, that was the word. When you make a, a shvua sheker and you are um, like saying like this is uh, like as true as God is, and then you. Are, and and then and you know you're lying, then even if you're just doing it because you want to get the the result of um, what the um, you know you like you're like you're just like like you're not trying to like you know imply that God is being false or something. You just want to get the benefit of the shua sheker. Um, you're degrading Hashem in your own mind. Yeah. Yeah, I think you have to take that approach, that it's in his own mind. And then I think that that suggests an answer for the Barabim thing, though. How, how do you say that? If you want to say it, Isaac. Uh, no. Uh, no. Uh, could, yeah. Could, could, could that maybe have more, more of an effect on you when you're like, doing it in public? Yeah, I, I think so. It's like there is a feeling of like, I'm getting away with this. Mm -hmm. You know, like if it's just people always think they're getting away with stuff if they're in private in general. But like when you're like, like, let, let me uh, give an analogy here. Like, there's the, I, I feel like I, I've never been in this position, so I can't say, but like, I feel like if you're, if you're like cheating, uh, like embezzling money or something like that, you know, and you're doing it privately and trying not to get caught, there is a certain, like, you're acting on an awareness that this is something that is wrong and you're trying to minimize it, you know, even though, you know, even though you're doing it, you know, for whatever reason. But let's say, like, you get like a Bernie Madoff guy who is, parading around as someone who's charitable meanwhile while stealing from tons of people and he's getting away with it you gotta you gotta imagine that the feeling that i'm getting away with it and flaunt i was it's flaunting or flouting flaunting it is like showing it off flaunting my my righteousness and my charity when really they got these guys got no idea these suckers got no idea that i'm really just like like uh, scamming everyone you know like it changes your in that case it changes your relationship to justice so here too, when you make a Shavuot Sheker privately, so yeah, you, you, when you do that, you are degrading the idea of, of the Shem Hashem in your mind. But when you do it publicly, even though no one knows it, there is this feeling of, yeah, like I am using God's name to cover up a falsehood and none of these suckers know about it. Like it's, it's really like, it's me and it's making, it's interesting because it has a Barabim phenomenon because you're, you're treating the fact you're treating human knowledge of the act as though it makes it more real like i'm i'm i i'm pulling a fast one on all these people and like i, I you know it, it's uh it's an interesting category of barabim because it's not because they don't they don't know about it you know yeah yes i think you have to say that so he, maybe this opens up a path to um uh, I'm just going to throw this out there as an answer to the question about the difference between the popular notion. I don't think people really think about Kiddush Hashem and Chilil Hashem in terms of Shem Hashem, you know, like ideas about God. I think they view it as like, let's say like the, the, the third category. Uh, they view it as like 
you know, giving Judaism a good name or a bad name, you know, which is not unrelated, but like, like the, the core idea is, from the Rav's presentation really is, is the Shem Hashem. You know, like no one would say that making a Shavuot Sheker is a Chil Hashem, even though you're literally doing the act like involving the name of God, like, you know, and that's like a literal meaning of the name of God, not even like this abstract knowledge thing. When you say no one would do it, you mean in like, in terms of the popular notion? The popular notion, yeah, yeah. No one, no one would identify that as a Chil Hashem, yeah. What the says. Yeah, even though that's what the Puzzle says. Yeah, I mean, I've just, I look, this is the first time I've noticed that Shavuot Shekhar is Kulash. Yeah, yeah. But like, but there's, there's, so like, that's an interesting thing is like the, you know, like, like people relate to the Kulash Hashem almost as the same way that they relate to things that, that bring shame upon your family. Like, you know, like, like what are people going to say about, uh, about your father if they see this? You know, like it's, it, it, it's not a, uh, it's not tied to the, the concept of the shame Hashem. And I'm, I'm not blaming people for that. Like, it's a very abstract concept. Um, but, uh, yeah. So what is the first? So, so, so Robin has two opportunities. Like, it's kind of almost accidental that you have the Robin in, like, the first step, like, where you're dying of your friends. Yeah. And then this, where you're, like, doing it, like, for, that it, it's kind of affecting your Robin. So, I mean, look, maybe you can say, I mean, just considering all possibilities here, I mean, is the fact that it's Barabim um, significant because of the impact on them or because of the impact on you? Well, in the first situation. Yeah, maybe even the first situation, mm -hmm. then it's, it's, it's in terms of in your own mind. I mean, one thing is, is certain is in the halachos, we don't care about how the non-Jews view us. Now, philosophically, there's an idea of Kiddush Hashem, Kiddush Hashem, Bagoyim, you know, <laughs> excuse me, but, um, but like, you know, we only care about a minion of uh, you know, Asar and Yisrael. Yeah. Um, now, one would think, and here's the other thing also, I mean, is there a concept of Baruch Am Hadras Melech with Kiddush Hashem and Chil Hashem? Like, do we say that that the more people than the bigger Chil Hashem is, or the bigger Kiddush Hashem is? Or, I've never seen that, right? It sounds like just Robin and, and, and uh, like Asara and not, you know? I mean, it's a weird idea, like, that is emerging here of uh, that Kiddush Hashem and Chil Hashem are, are solely for your own relationship with the Shem Hashem. I mean, when I say solely, again, I, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not excluding, I'm not saying that the other stuff is not that, but uh, right. that's it's something thinking, we're thinking about at least. Hmm. Especially that second category. I mean, the second category is what pushed us there. Yeah, right. I mean, the third category doesn't really sound like that. Right, that like that's true. That, that part, that one's the public one, right, yeah. yeah. Um, I still am bothered by the fact that there's no Kiddush Hashem Barabim in the second category. Uh -huh. There's a Chil Hashem Barabim, uh, uh, sorry, I'm Israel, but not a... Uh, right. Oh, you know why? Maybe? Because if you're doing Lishma, then, uh, then it shouldn't matter. Like, what are you going to say? That the mitzvah is a higher level, like you're doing it more for Lishem Hashem if it's among Asar and Israel or not? Like, like in yeah. the Avera, when you're doing it as a rebellious act, it will further degrade the name of God if you're doing it in public, in your own mind, you know. But to say that, like, like to say that a person doing a mitzvah lishma, that his lishma will be greater or less if there are more or fewer people, is no, means not lishma. Yeah, yeah. All right, that 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 that's a satisfactory answer for that question. Okay, <laughs> even if you don't have everything else, yeah. Wait, hold on. So, if the in the first thing of like dying with Hashem, yeah. so that's all about in your head, then, yeah. Which I'm just saying tentatively, I'm not saying yeah, that yeah, for yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually forgot that. But, oh, sorry. <laughs> I, 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 no, not because of that. Yeah. Yeah, um, is it, maybe I was going to ask about it, the Robin, which is not the Shema, but, oh yeah, I mean, right, I guess it's not the Shema. But, yeah, it's not the Shema, yeah, you don't run into that problem there. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, it is, I think it, I think a person does relate to it differently, if it's a public act of de demonstrating their uh, their loyalty to yeah. God uh, right. to the Shem Hashem. Okay, so I guess the plan. Oh, I meant to say this at the beginning of this year. So plan for this week is as follows. Okay, tomorrow uh, we will Blin Eder start Perak Shishi, which is about uh, the Shemos Hashem and destroying things with the uh, more Shemos Hashem stuff. Um, Wednesday, we are definitely not having Ron Bakios because I'm getting my second dose of the vaccine, okay, unless something horrible happens. 
And then Thursday is the big unknown because I have talked to people who have been in bed with flu symptoms for three days after getting the second dose and people are, it's no different than the first dose. So for me, if it's no different than the first dose, the only difference, the only thing with the first dose was I had a sore arm, but like I was fine, no even mental changes, but then people who get foggy mind and stuff. So I'll have to just let you know on Thursday, whether there's going to be a run with the kiosk on Thursday. Okay. Yeah. All righty. See ya. Yeah. See you. Oh, and Tefila and uh, Mishle are not in person as always on Mondays. Yeah. yeah.